like that. No. Hmm. Okay. So it was okay. It, it was not okay to talk back, but it was okay to disobey the go. Like you. Yeah. Were, it it's like it's like code. It didn't really make yeah. sense. But it all makes sense now. It all makes sense now. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing this weekend? The Jedi mind over there. Chilling. Chilling. Yeah. Okay. He's uh, chilling, coach. No. <laughs> okay. Bring, bring in Tabor and Islander, the, the senior oh. lineman, and your your story. You were one minute late. Yeah. After we gotta talk. In. We gotta talk to, to the. He's he's hard, man. Yeah, hard I was cool. coming back from a seven on seven thing with Coach Wingle and uh, Braden because I was snapping because I play center. And so I got back at – we were at Coach's house at, like, 1, and I lived an hour away, so I didn't get home till 2. And then practice was at 6, so I had to wake up at 4.30 to uh, make it in time, and I got there at, like, 6.01. I remember Eric Mahinke was like, all right, well, you got to go do some pencil rolls. So while everybody else was stretching and warming up, I was over there rolling. Almost, like, fell asleep in the middle of it. All I'm saying, man, is that I don't want to hear any excuses. Well, That's all. I'm actually kind of confused on why Coach Mahanke didn't have this up on Instagram at some point because he puts everything up on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely true. Hey, let's talk about this weekend. Uh, Jeremiah apparently doesn't want to talk about it because he's just chilling. But uh, Camp Lindo coming in here 6 o'clock. The place should be full behind us, the football stadium. I know everybody's excited for it. Tabor, what's your, uh, what's your feeling heading into get, not only getting the Play State Championship game to end your career but doing it at home? Oh, it feels great. You know, we always want to go out on a win and a high note, especially since, it's, like you said, it's our last game, Jeremiah and I last game. And uh, it's just a great feeling knowing that we did as much as we could and we accomplished all that we could and all that we wanted to. So overall, it's just a great feeling. Jeremiah, for you, you were on the fre- you were a freshman BHS when they went and won a state title. You were there with Co- Coach Carr. Tabor was playing on the in the game just before you guys. Um, in this moment now, how much – have you seen your change as a football player from then till now? Uh, I think I've grown a lot as a football player from then uh, to now. Um, I'm really, like, proud of my team for standing in this long and putting in the, the effort and the, the hard work to get us here where we're, we're going to play a state game in our own backyard. Speaking of that, the number's a little skewed because no host team could actually play – a state title game at their home for, I think, 84 years from 1930 to 2013, 2014. So the number is a little skewed, but when you think about it, this is the only third time a state championship has ever been played in Bakersfield. The first two were in the 1920s, one at Griffith Field and the other one out at the fairgrounds where 12,000 people were at. Um, can you guys, Tabor, can you grasp those numbers and think about that, you know, there hasn't been a state championship, and obviously nobody's been able to do that up until last year. But to be a part of this and be a part of a little bit of history of Bakersfield, does that mean something even more to you? Oh, it means everything. You know, just like uh, yesterday we had like a little team meeting and the coaches shared a little bit and our special team coach talking about, you know, leaving our legacy. And that's exactly the point that he brought up was that this is the first time in, you know, the no- number of years that uh, it's been hosted in Bakersfield, and it's just a big thing. I think that it should – make everyone everybody want to come out just because it's been so long i think that it's gonna uh boost the team's confidence a little bit and just get us going a little bit more have you guys had shout outs on social media and things this week that let you know the whole town is behind you it's not i mean it seems like at this time of year it's not bchs and liberty and centennial and bhs it's it's the city of bakersfield rallying behind whoever happens to be still playing uh yeah i've i've uh I've gotten a lot of people saying, "Hey, good luck. We're gonna we're gonna go to the game. Good luck. I hope you guys win. Put on for the city. Do what you guys do. Been doing all year, so that's what we plan on doing. I mean, we love the support, but at the end of the day, we got to go out and we got to play our game." Tabor, for you guys, it's been so interesting as you guys have played during these playoffs. You guys were down by two touchdowns against Memorial. You guys were down against Tulare Western in the first quarter. And then you guys were down what twenty-one to seven at the half, yeah. and. In Not to North mention North. fourteen to nothing in about four minutes. I mean, yeah, it was like four a, minutes and four seconds. Yeah, you guys now real fourteen quick. nothing. What what's the makeup of this team that allows you guys to never get flustered and never get down and continue to battle for four quarters? Oh, we have a lot of heart, and our motto this year has been finish. I think that's what we've done throughout those games. We were behind, and uh, I guess the first half didn't exactly go how we wanted, and we didn't execute to our fullest. And then we go in the locker room and we talk about it. We talk about what we need to fix, and then we make those changes. We come out, and like I said, we have heart and we never quit, and we always finish. When you snapped the ball to Brayden on that first play of the third quarter and went to the smallest guy on the field, <laughs> what'd that mean for you? Oh, it meant everything. You know, it's just, you know, we always talk about. Stand up and take a bow, Alex. Oh. It's okay. That's Alex Wallace, there he is. everybody. There he is. Yep. 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 Scoring. 
80-yard touchdown and then the game-tying touchdown later in the third quarter. We always talk about, you know, you always talk about stuff, and then once you see it actually come true and you see, the, you know, all the paper, all the not the paperwork, but all, like, the plays drawn out and all the work that we put in, once you see it come out, it, and uh, it show it's always a great feeling. Jeremiah, you've got ten interceptions this year on defense. You had That's it. Uh, yeah, you had two two on Friday night. Although I did hear the comment on the sidelines. I was watching practice last night. Somebody said, "Well, but how many tackles does he have?" <laughs> and somebody else said, "But that's not what he does. Like don't twice, worry. Yeah, don't, like twice as many. Don't worry about that. No, this uh, is Deion Sanders here. Yeah. Catch him, don't tackle him. But but uh, anyway, the the only thing that's crazy about ten interceptions is that you have more touchdowns on offense. Kind of compare those feelings for us. What's it like to take the ball away from the other team versus score six for your team? Uh, well, on offense, that's like it's just part of my job, so I have to go out and I play ball. And uh, on defense, I feel like if I don't get the ball or, or uh, if we're doing something slow on offense, I, you always can uh, go out and have enough effort and and play ball on defense. Like there's nothing you can say or do uh, on the offensive side to like change the game. Well, I mean you can change the game, but not like like you can't single handedly do it. But on defense, like. If you're in the right spot, you can do that and go up and get the ball and make plays. Tabor, uh, still a small school here at Bakersfield Christian, but I think the numbers are incredible. I think like 85% of the students here participate in some sport. Um, what is it about this culture here at Bakersfield Christian that really kind of gets you guys to be extracurricular and not just go to school but you know be a well-rounded human being? I think it's kind of like the whole mentality here is not just – do one thing and do it well it's kind of do everything spread out you know we have different programs with community servers we have like a robotics program we have all these extra things that we can do and there it's really encouraged here at this school to do it to go out you know just try football or try basketball if you don't like it then you know find something that suits you if jeremiah was a robot would it short circuit after about three minutes because he couldn't stick with the parameters i think he would try to do his own thing <laughs> <not listen. laughs> <Would you>? yeah. <laughs> That's the question of the day right there. Hey, when we look at Campolindo, uh, it, I don't want to say it's looking in the mirror because I haven't even seen him play, but they, they throw the ball around a lot like you guys have. They've got a, a quarterback and a receiver combo like you guys have that, that's been very productive. Uh, when you look at this team on film, now they've been in three consecutive state finals, so it's an experienced team even more so than you guys are experienced with postseason games. Um, what do you see from Campolindo, and, and how do you see this game go on Saturday night? Yeah, go for it, Tabor. Well, I guess up front on the O line, you know, they have a very disciplined defense. They do the same thing uh, almost every snap, but they do it very, very well, kind of like the Seahawks. So they they don't make a lot of mistakes, and that's always hard to beat. You know, usually you you go out and you try to do the best you can and kind of hope that the other team beats themselves, but they don't do that. They're very, like I said, they're very disciplined, and they they get after it and they play well. Jeremiah, your thoughts? Uh well to be this far in in season you have to be a really good team and they're they to say they've done it three years consecutively uh that means they're a phenomenal team so I think it's gonna be a good game I mean we're not gonna change anything we're gonna go out and we're gonna play our game and we're just gonna play ball and finish strong how how great has the atmosphere been here this week on campus guys uh it's been it's been pretty good you know it feels good you knowing your school is always behind it's your a little back. quiet <laughs> I mean we, we could make a little bit more noise if we wanted to. They also think they're in class, I think. Is the yeah. Problem, yeah. Hey, you guys are out of class. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Tabor, for you, I mean, oh. I mean, you've been a part of this now. You were yeah. you were a freshman when you guys went to state down in Carson. Um, is there a difference now between now and then? Do you think it's a little bit more because you guys know that you're staying home, you're not mm -hmm. traveling, everybody can you know sleep in their own beds and still come to the game? Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's been kind of upbeat around here. I know that it's dark and a little bit rainy outside, but it's still upbeat. And there's a lot of support out here, not just in the school, but in the community. Zach? I guess I guess we've we've reached the end of our uh, of of what we have to say here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it, it, listen, it's been a season. I think, and we've talked about this a little bit before, but it started with a loss to Garces, and and coach has been pretty outspoken in saying that was good for you. Do you think if you don't lose that game, Jeremiah, that you're sitting where you are right now at at 13 and one and playing for a state title? Um, uh, I, I mean, I think it set the tone for our season because we were like, well, we don't like feeling like this. We don't like having an L under our belt. So we're just gonna. We went out and we played ball the to do what we've done. We what have we done? Thirteen and thirteen in a, in a row, row since yeah. then. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's good, but you always want to go undefeated. Everybody wants to go undefeated. Mm -hmm. So I don't like the loss, but I'm glad. I'm glad we capitalized from it. I, I want to ask you guys a question too. This is 
this is the Carr's second year coaching here. And one of my favorite stories Darren tells is the first time David, his brother, tried to install the offense and brought in about 300 plays from his NFL days. Uh, what, what was that like, Tabor, when he first came in and said, okay, this is what we're going to do? And from what I understand, there were kind of some wide eyes. Like, you expect yeah. us to learn all this? Mm-hmm. My head was definitely turning, just trying to comprehend all of it and all the the old line up front, all the stuff, all the blocking schemes and the pass protection. So it was definitely kind of like, uh, I guess, it, it, w- it like waking me up to like everything that's out there in football. And it's not just, I don't know. It's just, it, it was definitely a good experience because I kind of humbled me like, oh, well, there's so much more than I know. And this, it kind of, I guess it made me uh, idolize him a little bit more like well he knows all this stuff i have so much that i can learn from him and it's a great opportunity when he walked in the door jeremiah did you guys all know who david was and, and his past or did you kind of have to you know google it and no, see i what... never heard of him no i didn't no, think i'm just so. kidding yeah <laughs> I, of course I, I knew who he was uh i've known darren for a while so i i kind of knew their whole background right. and it was it was it was nice to know that uh even dave like being so high uh as a like a celebrity kind of to humble himself and come and Coach high school football, right. like that's that's great of him, I think. Yeah, where is he right now, Tabor? I have no idea where he is. Yeah, he's, NFL NFL he's down in El Segundo, getting ready yeah. for NFL Network tonight. Uh, so Seahawks and Rams, who, who you guys got? I'm gonna say Ooh. Rams now. Uh, yeah. Rams. 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 Wow, Rams. Wow, that was a lot of Rams. Seahawks fans. Yeah, Jeez. raise your hand for the Rams. Anybody? I'll go with Rams. We got a few. We got a few. All right, Jared Goff. Okay, uh, I think I think they're gonna have a long night tonight. I actually was at the first game in LA which was against the Seahawks and they beat them but I think I think the Seahawks get revenge tonight um who throws a better deep ball deep ball David or Braden mm. Mm. coach Darren <laughs> yeah actually no coach AWOL AWOL drops it in the bucket all right it's coach AWOL we gotta have a competition then so David wait 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 a minute now where's David on the list you got you got him you got it's da- it's it's first place is AWOL and coach Darren and then um yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. You didn't answer my question. <laughs> no, you, David you, you, you need to put <laughs> yeah. Coach Carr somewhere in there. You need to put David Carr in huh? there somewhere. Where is he? Mm. Oh, David maybe Carr. he just hasn't showed his stuff to you. Wow. I mean, uh, I'm thinking Saturday night there may be a, f- thinking, a few uh, wrinkles to the offense. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah's right. getting no ball Saturday night after that coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have to go pick off five on Saturday. It's all right. Used to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. Yeah, let's take a break, and we're going to bring in a couple more Eagles. We're going to bring in uh, – w- did you Brett call them the, bi- call them the big uglies? They are the big that- uglies. All right, yeah. they took exception to that. But, uh, but yeah, Jonah Rogers and Brett Schuler are going to be in next year on B-Varsity Live. We'll be back right after this.